Hello everyone, we are very happy to welcome you today to an exclusive Can I Do Stuff session on the acceleration of cloud computing in the midst of COVID-19. Why the right cloud adoption matters now more than ever. With Odalek Luas, cloud evangelist and product manager at Tillandus Proximus, Luxembourg. A little bit about Odric's background. Odric has always been passionate about the latest technologies and has been promoting and introducing companies to public cloud solutions for almost seven years. In 2013, after graduating in IT and working in Italy as a research scientist within the domain of green computing, he specialized himself in cloud computing. After working for two years, helping to transform large US-based telecom operators, he joins Telandus Proximus Luxembourg to work on the creation of cloud products for Luxembourgish customers to adopt the cloud. On the moderator side, we have our co-host and my dear colleague, Alex Panikan, head of partnerships and ecosystem development at Loft. Prior to joining Loft, Alex was a serial entrepreneur creating companies in the space of e-commerce and alike. He holds an MBA from the University of Quebec in Montreal. We also taught marketing and strategy as a teaching associate for almost five years. At Loft, he's been traveling the world, connecting fintech entrepreneurs with the local ecosystem and has been a master of ceremony interviewing thought leaders from all the walks of life. Audrey, so you should be a little bit flattered, at least a little bit, just kidding. Alex, Audrey, the screens are yours. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you for the kind introduction um, and for setting up the, this uh, webinar. Hello, Audrey, hello everybody. So this might be one of the most interesting of our webinars, at least for me, because I don't know much about cloud computing, so I'm expecting to learn a lot. So a lot of pressure on you, Audrey, to start with. So why we are doing that? So we've seen that we, we remote working uh, lately for the last two months. Um, a lot of the financial actors in Luxembourg and our fintechs have moved to uh, the cloud services. Um, there's even a study in the US that showed that more than 90% of the financial services are using any kind of cloud computing right now. And uh, it's an increase of more than 40% in just two months. So it's just booming. But what's cloud computing and how to use it? Um, that's the question. In one of my past lives, uh, we used still to rent uh, servers in uh, data centers. And uh, one day we wanted to move to Amazon Web Services and it was a uh, a very costly and a very painful experience. So I hope uh, we'll help our entrepreneurs not to repeat the same mistakes uh, I've done in the past. So we asked the expert industry to give us an update of cloud computing and what are the best practices. So he's working at Telandus, he's one of the leadership partners and uh, even why we reach out to Audric because most people we talk uh, say he's the best in Luxembourg. So again, said Audric, a lot of uh, pressure on you. So thank you so much for being with us today. And um, so, Odric, the floor is yours, the screen is yours. Uh, please, go ahead. Yes, so thank you very much for putting the bar so high already. Um, now the expectations are, are probably pretty high. Um, I, I hope I can fulfill them all. Um, so first of all, I'd like to, to actually thank you both for, for inviting us and hosting this webinar. Um, we really hope we can answer as many questions as there is in the audience, and that um, you enjoy a small session. Um, on our side, we have prepared a small presentation to, to run you through um, and explaining a bit uh, trends, uh, not only trends during COVID-19, but trends in general. What is the market going to, but also how is Luxembourg actually behaving uh, with those trends? And within that presentation, actually, we'll answer most of the questions um, that were already raised. So, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, you'll see um, a small presentation, if that's fine. I'm going to start directly by, by an agenda. So the goal here is, is really to answer five main questions, uh, which you might have, which were um, already uh, provided as part of the agenda of this webinar. It's basically start really low, so everybody's at the same level. What is cloud computing and what are the different models um, companies can go to? Uh, which kind of company should go to which model, uh, what are the advantages over one or the other, which workloads would you put where, and so on. Then we'll also see what is actually the evolution. Why? Because um, it was already mentioned that there has been a, a quite big raise in regards to usage of public cloud, but this raise actually only comes from one of the models, and this is what we will be concentrating on. Um, also, we will see what is 
public cloud, which is one of the models, and how can we expand its use? Also, we'll talk about private cloud. Private cloud is um, locally here in Luxembourg already very present. Globally, it's also very present. Um, what is it compared to public cloud? Is it going to disappear maybe? Um, or is it going to continue? Is it going to increase? We'll discuss all of that. But also, what is the future actually of cloud computing? Where's the market going? Um, and if you should do an investment today, for example, where should you do it in order to future proof this investment? In order to make sure that actually within the next two or three years, maybe you do not need to change the model you're using today. So let's start with the first question. What is cloud computing and what are the different models? So I'll pass this um, quite fast. Uh, I don't think it's very complicated to understand, or at least I hope not. Um, but basically, cloud computing, you have to think, and this is a definition of Microsoft, if you see it. Um, this is a definition of Microsoft, and basically they qualify it as being infrastructure, which is available over the internet, and which will then offer fast, innovative, and flexible resources with an economy of scale. Now, again, that is a definition. Um, and if you're like me, you do not always understand definitions because they put fancy word in a fancy sentence. So more precisely, and from a technical matter, what is cloud computing? Typically, it is still an infrastructure in a data center. It's a difference that you do not always know where the data center is, and you do not always know um, where your data is stored, and so on. You know it more or less, but you do not know and you do not own actually um, the physical hardware that is underlying. So for example, um, in a cloud computing environment, you'll be able to buy compute, you'll be able to buy storage, you'll be able to buy a database, etc. But in reality, you do not buy the underlying hardware. You simply rent some space on top of that hardware. If we look then at the different models of public cloud that exist, you have two main models, which are typically public cloud and private cloud. Let's start with private cloud because this is the one we, we hear at least the most about here in Luxembourg. A private cloud is typically, um, or in theory, uh, a cloud solution, which means compute, storage, etc., that is only owned by one company, and that is only used by that single company. What we notice in Luxembourg is that actually this term is often misused. Why? Because um, many solutions, including ours, uh, we have a private cloud that is called Uflex, um, are sometimes called private clouds, but in reality, they are not really. They are what we call IT outsourcing infrastructures. Why? Because um, there is no automation, there is not a, many things, and basically all what we provide are virtual machines. So compared to this, what is actually a public cloud then? Well, a public cloud is really an infrastructure which is going to be shared, and it's going to be massively shared. What does it mean? Um, it means typically that there can be thousands, ten thousands of customers on the same infrastructure, sharing resources, sharing uh, space, and actually co-locating um, resources. And sometimes, for example, for certain services, you might actually be sharing the same disk for storage. You might be sharing the same VM to execute some pieces of code, etc. So this is really the big difference between public cloud and private cloud. In theory, a private cloud, there's only one customer. And on a public cloud, you have many, many customers. Now, in the middle, what you also see is that there is something called a hybrid cloud. What is a hybrid cloud? Well, that's typically when you have a mix of both. So when a company actually, they have some private cloud, but they also use public cloud. However, it can also be, for example, that a company uses multiple private clouds or multiple public clouds. So I hope I, 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 I'm, I'm already lost. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so just for my understanding, cloud yes. computing is I'm hosting my data somewhere, I don't know where, right? Exactly. I don't know where is the server, I don't know who, with whom I'm collocating the, the data. The private cloud is just me having a server in a data center. What's the difference? So what's the difference? Um, typically, it's going to be on the model you're going to be consuming. When you okay. actually have a server in a data center, you have to pay for this server. Um, so typical model is that you have to commit for a certain period. Um, as you just bought hardware, basically, you'll commit for three years or maybe five years. Whereas on the public cloud, the model is completely different. Why? Because we just mentioned you're, you're collocating on the same hardware. You're collocating there, which means that if one day you don't want to use it anymore, actually, you can just 
pull out of it. Exactly. You do not pay for it anymore. And the next person that wants to reuse that hardware can just repurchase it and um, be another co-locator on it. Okay, but I know where the private cloud is. I know it's Telandus who's owning the servers, right? They are yes. owned and they are hosted in Luxembourg. That's the difference, exactly. the main difference. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you so much. So if we continue then to the next question, if there are no others, um, what's the actually the evolution and potential of the different cloud models? So we saw there are, there are three mains uh, which are used. Um, there are some few others, but um, to be honest, they are almost never used. So if we actually look at some statistics, and those few slides will be mainly on statistics now, it's more to show you actually where the market is going and what are the trends. Now, so studies, um, they are done by global institutions and they do not always reflect Luxembourg. So what I will also be sharing is actually um, us as Talendus, what we actually see here locally in Luxembourg. Why? Because Luxembourg is a very closed market, which sometimes behaves slightly differently from the rest of the world, and especially in regards to cloud. So what, is it, what do we see here? We actually see that 94% of respondents which um, responded to this survey, and it was a survey uh, requesting to a thousand IT companies whether they use cloud or not, 94% answered, yes, indeed, we use cloud. Out of those 94, 91% actually um, were using public cloud and 72% were using private cloud. And we see that 69% again used a mix of both. Now, this is on a global level. And for those of you who, who already discussed with various companies here in Luxembourg, you actually know that public cloud was until not so long ago, almost not present here. Why is that? Well, we'll talk about it a bit later, but the main presence and the main model used in the past here in Luxembourg was still the private cloud model. And today, what we see is actually a clear transition from one model to the other. So from private cloud to public cloud. And of course, as the uh, drawing shows it here, there's a transition period, which is uh, 69% where companies go through a hybrid model, where they actually during a short period of time or sometimes a longer period of time have both model in parallel. Now those both model in parallel doesn't mean they are running twice the workloads everywhere. It simply means that some workloads run somewhere in one model, typically in private cloud and the other model or the other workloads run in public cloud. Now, why actually um, are customers not going to public cloud? We'll see later there are a lot of advantages of going to the public cloud, but yet many companies do not go or until um, COVID were not going. And why is that? Well, um, another study actually asked um, here 62 companies why they weren't going to the cloud. And the reason is actually um, quite straightforward in my opinion. Uh, the main reason being the lack of expertise. Today, most companies do not know what is public cloud. They do not have people that know it. And there's kind of the scare of going with something, with a solution they do not understand and they do not know where it is located. So this is probably one of the main concerns. The other concerns is again security. Now, why is actually security a concern? Let me explain you a small story. If you actually look at the funding that public cloud providers um, put into uh, security, it's actually way, way bigger than whatever private cloud provider could put. For example, we have a budget for security in our private cloud offering, but of course it's way smaller um, than for example, Microsoft, which provides a public cloud. Indeed, for example, per year on average, they spend about $500 million on security. Um, this is bigger than whatever we could spend, probably whatever um, Luxembourg as a country, including all their companies could spend on security. So to the question, is public cloud, for example, less secure? Well, actually, not really. So why does it come out? Well, it actually comes out because usually companies do not have the expertise to understand what is put in place, but also to understand how to secure what they have in public cloud. Now, what are the main other problems? Well, another big problem is usually that uh, they do not know how to manage the cloud. So they do not know how to implement governance, how to implement controls. And also, as I explained, the cost model is different, which means you basically pay for what you consume. And what usually companies are scared of is that 
at one point they do not notice what they consume and at the end of the month at the end of the year they rack up a huge um, invoice and suddenly they have to pay this invoice which they were not expecting whereas as mentioned for private cloud if you commit for three or five years you know what you're going to pay over the next three to five years however as i will explain later actually there are solutions to all of that so then even with those problems why would you still go to public cloud well again same study but asked what are the benefits of going to, to public cloud and those benefits if you look at them they really helped out actually during COVID-19 and later I will explain during COVID-19 the model that actually really increased is a public cloud whereas private cloud actually was not not going up but couldn't respond as fast as public cloud did so if we look here actually um, the main advantage is really the go-to market so basically, with public cloud companies, we're able to go to the market really, really fast. And I'll take a couple of examples later. But also their scalability. Why is there scalability? Well, you have to compare the difference. On a private cloud, if it's local here in Luxembourg, it is scaled for Luxembourg, which means it is scaled for 1,000, 1,600 companies, more or less, which means, yes, there's always a bit of space left so that they can onboard new customers, but it's only limited which means, yes, maybe there's a wiggle room of 10, 15% of space left. So in a case, for example, such as COVID-19, um, they can deploy up to 10 to 15% more resources. However, um, for public cloud, they have scaled for worldwide um, usage. As I mentioned, there can be 10,000 of customers on a public cloud, which means they have way more wiggle room to actually host extra resources, which also means that in case of COVID-19, um, you can onboard way faster. Why? Um, simply because the resources are already there. There is no ordering process. And for example, if you need a specific service, it can be up and running within a few seconds. And this is really a great advantage. Then again, as the resources are available, you can scale way faster, but also the availability is higher. Why? Because here in Luxembourg, you're going to, usually a private cloud is going to be spread on two data centers, maybe three. It's not going to be hundreds of data centers because we do not have hundreds of data centers within the country. Whereas, however, if you look this at a worldwide scale, it is possible. And indeed, there are hundreds of data centers hosting public clouds, such as Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, or, or Amazon. Um, but then also, public cloud typically, as there's an economy of scale, they can automate way more than you can on a private cloud, which means that things and operations and deployments etc they are so way so much easier and you need so you need less effort actually to do things which means you're going to be more efficient so what are those advantages actually meaning in reality well let's take a concrete example which is actually COVID-19 a lot of companies um, were not ready for it uh, we all know it uh, some companies had to keep their staff uh, working in the office, some companies could send their staff working from home, but yet the problem was that most companies didn't have the tools to allow all their staff to work from home or even to allow their staff to work from home at all. And this is not only collaboration tools, which means, yes, of course, you need a collaboration a tool such as chats, you need uh, um, video conferencing tools, but you also need, for example, to provide um, them with a desktop. Some companies have laptops, others not. So how do you do this? Well, you have other solutions such as virtual desktop. But again, if your company didn't invest prior to COVID-19 into those tools, investing during is very complicated. And why is it complicated? Because everybody wants the same. Everybody wants their staff, their employees to be able to work from home. Now you have to think at the scale of a country. If Luxembourg suddenly asks all their staff, uh, all the employees of different companies, to try working from home as much as possible, it means there's a massive surge in needs in regards to those specific services. And it's not with the private cloud that we were able to actually answer to this massive surge, but indeed it was with public cloud. And public cloud had all the advantages for this. Why? Because companies needed those services within days. Uh, many companies decided almost over weekends that their employees had to stay home which means that over weekends, they needed to be capable of providing service and providing um, the correct tooling and everything to their company and to their employees. 
And again, in case you need hardware in a private cloud, you need to order this hardware, or you need to hope that the provider has some stock left so that you can purchase this. However, on the public cloud, you could just go and collocate with another, with another um, customer of the public cloud provider and actually use resources which were already available. And also, as it's more automated, deployments were way faster. I'm going to give you an example. Um, we had many customers which, again, over a period of a week, decided that their employees needed to stay home. And for example, one of them I remember very well um, didn't even have um, laptops. So they still had normal PCs in their offices. And suddenly they asked their employees, if you have a laptop at home or if you have a computer at home, please work from home and we will provide you with a virtual desktop. So a virtual software on which we will recreate um, a desktop. And again, they do not need this in three months. They need it right away. So what we were capable of doing and what uh, what we agreed with them is that we would deploy everything in the public cloud and this took us only five business days. So within five business days, we were able to deploy this tooling for almost 200 of the employees so that their employees could actually keep working from home. And this was only doable using public cloud. Why? Because there is the automation, which means there's staff efficiency. We do not need 50 engineers to do this. There's a cost reduction because, of course, the hardware is shared. The hardware is already present. And of course, there's a faster time to market for those same reasons. <clears throat> so talking about that now, um, here's a, a quite complex drawing. And it's just to say, uh, it's not to explain it in detail. It doesn't really represent anything in particular. But most companies are now in habit of uh, so-called hybrid clouds, which means they already had the investment in a private cloud solution. They have some software running there, but with COVID-19 and with other problems, or because it's their strategy, they decided to also use public cloud, which means currently they have both. Having both, it can mean a lot of different infrastructures, a lot of different environments. And of course, all of this needs to be managed. All of this brings complexity to, the, to your landscape. And how do you um, address this? Well, um, I'll explain it to you later. But basically, there are things you need to, to address, such as, OK, compliance. We know Luxembourg is very heavy on compliance. Um, some call it a burden. Um, I wouldn't call it a burden. I think it's, it's uh, their guidelines which are there to make sure that companies do not commit mistakes. But then there's also the security, the governance, but also how do you actually go there, which is the adoption. Why? Because a lot of companies already understand private cloud. OK, I need a physical hardware. I know that. And that is going to run on Windows Server, for example. But the public cloud isn't that easy. And there are a lot of new services. Indeed, some have 200, 300 new services compared to a private cloud. So how do I know which one to use? How do I know uh, where to go to? Well, that's what we call the adoption. And that's where you do not have to commit the mistake. Why? Because if you do the investment today, or if you did it already, well, let's not redo it in two to three years because you realize you did some mistakes at that level. So the next question we wanted to answer is what is the use of public cloud and um, how to expand its usage? Why? Because we saw there has been a surge in it. Uh, it's not that we are abandoning private cloud, not at all. We see um, actually some slight differences. But really, how can I leverage it in a better way? What should I put there? And so on. So first of all, um, we at Talendus, uh, we work with multiple providers. As I mentioned, we have our own private cloud, uh, which has quite a few customers. Uh, indeed, we have almost 200 Luxembourgish customers which are hosted there. But then you also have other public clouds, such as Google, um, Microsoft Azure, and uh, Amazon with their AWS service. And then you have other clouds, such as Office 365, which provide collaboration tools, for example. Our strategy in this regard is not to say use one in particular, it's the best one, but it's um, actually to use um, our own customers' experience and our experience to make recommendations. So yes, we have our own private cloud, and we will never recommend that you put everything on there um, just because it's easier or so. But what we recommend, and it's written on this slide, is that depending on what are your expectations, you should rather go to one or to the other. Typically, today, if you should do an investment, 
you should look at, okay, but what is it I'm going to invest in and what are its needs? If I need, for example, very short latency, well, you want most likely to be hosted in Luxembourg and not somewhere in Germany or in the Netherlands or in England or wherever you know. So for example, for latency, for compliancy, etc., if you need Luxembourgish um, hosting, you would stay on a private cloud such as Uflex. However, if this is not at all a problem, if you, if you only care about the data, for example, or your workload staying in Europe, you can go for one of those providers. And which one to choose? Well, our recommendation is quite simple. For everything that is in relation to big data, um, innovation, um, artificial intelligence, containers, um, we usually recommend to Google. Why? They are not the only provider for this. They all three provide it. However, um, Google initiated a most of those tools. What does it mean? Um, big data. Okay, again, what is big data? Well, let me put it short. When you go on the Google search engine and you type um, what's the weather in Luxembourg tomorrow, uh, it comes back within seconds. But you also see that actually um, it executed and it returned thousands and thousands, sometimes millions of, of answers back. So how is it capable of actually providing you one very specific answer within a millisecond of time? Well, it's because they developed their own tools for this. They developed their own database for it. And the database they developed, they actually also make it available within their cloud. So let's say you have a big database to run and it needs to come back really quick. Well, on Google, you can use one in particular. I'm not saying it's the best for your use case, but they are very good at that. On the other hand, for example, let's switch to Microsoft Azure. When do we recommend that? Well, Microsoft Azure is actually very present in Luxembourg and we recommend it to many customers. Why? Because Microsoft um, Azure integrates very well with other Microsoft tools. And for companies that already use a lot of Microsoft tools, going to Microsoft Azure is so much easier because this integration is already planned for you. Microsoft really puts a lot of effort into making compatibilities between the different tools. On AWS, when would you go? Typically, you would want to go to AWS when you want only one provider. Why? Because AWS is a bit the Swiss knife of the clouds. So they know how to do everything. Maybe not everything's the best, but they literally do everything. And of course, when you want to use collaboration, for example, mails, you want to use a SharePoint, you want to use um, other tools such, such as, uh, as those, you would go for something such as Office 365, which has been for many years now the leader on this market. So basically, our main recommendation usually on this is do not go for a single provider. Check what are your needs and cherry pick the best out of all of them. It doesn't cost you more. It simply um, allows you to have a better service. So what is then that you would put on public cloud? So I mentioned already a few examples, um, but typically what we will see in public cloud are what we call SaaS, so software as a service applications, and most likely cloud native applications. A lot of startups today, when they develop new software and they develop the most innovative software, typically the software you want to use in your business or your business users wants to use, they are going to be developed in the public cloud. Why is that? It's because it's cheaper for them to develop there. Why? Because they do not need to commit three years or five years on some hardware. They simply need to go there to have a credit card. And if their business runs during three weeks only, they will only have to pay for three weeks. Which means most software nowadays, the new ones and the startups, etc., they will develop directly on public cloud and use um, services that are only available there. Um, one example is actually directly here on the slide. It's Dropbox. You all know Dropbox. Uh, maybe you don't use it within your company. You use it at home to store pictures, etc. Well, the thing not a lot of people know is that actually Dropbox um, started on the public cloud and they initially used the storage available on public cloud, which is how they could actually tell you, okay, you get five gig for free, but in reality, they were only paying for the data you were actually storing there. And that's where they started. And we all know where they ended up today. It's probably one of the um, main uh, storage uh, providers in regards to SaaS and for sharing out there. So what other services would you put 
Well, again, I've put a, a really small uh, diagram here below, which actually shows you typically what services are mostly used. And currently, um, the top five is quite simple, it's databases. So the top five workloads which are currently, or resources which are currently used in public cloud are databases because it's so much easier in the public cloud. Now, I mentioned quite a few times that there has been a search in, a, in, a, in public cloud, but how big was this search? Well, from our perspective, it was huge. Um, from one day to the other, uh, almost every customer had a request, not in specific in regards to public cloud, but in regards to finding a solution to enable the employees to work either from home or um, in a different manner that was initially planned. So again, uh, me, I do not yet have um, statistics as we have them for Luxembourg, but pretty much that's how it looked like. So from one day to another, the request really went up and we expect those requests now to stabilize, but still keep the same. Why? Because most companies were forced to actually use public cloud, whether they wanted it or not. And this meant they had to basically reinvent themselves. They had to adopt really fast, and we hope at least that this adoption, that really fast adoption, didn't scare them. And we did our maximum for them not to be scared about this transformation, and that they will then see that the inhibitors, which we mentioned before, actually not inhibitors at all, that it's more a misconception of the technology. So now, how do we actually go there? So we mentioned a lot of companies already did the move. Uh, was it a perfect move? Most likely not. Why? Because they had to do this within, uh, within a week, within a couple of days, and they really had to onboard to public cloud really fast. But by definition, and when we work with our customers, we try to follow a very specific strategy. Um, we have a methodology indeed, which allows um, our customers and companies that work with us, so it can be sometimes partners even, um, to actually transition uh, to a public cloud model from either an on-premise model or even to a private cloud. Why? Because what they will notice is that they need to reinvent themselves. You do not work in the public cloud as you used to in, um, in a private cloud. And the goal here is really that IT becomes an enabler for you. Why what's the difference when you say it's not working the same? I'm sorry to interrupt you. What, what's the what's the main difficulty? So what is the main difficulty? One? Yes. So what is the main difficulty? In my opinion, is that uh, it actually comes from the business users. Uh, if you work in IT, you know that um, in the past your business users, which means the people that actually work in relation really to to um, to the business, they will come and they will say, oh, we want this new tool um, or a tool that does this. And usually the answer is, oh, well, it's going to be quite complicated and it's going to take us a year to implement it. So either you then do a no-go or um, you figure out how you're going to do that. In the public cloud, users do it quite differently. Why? Because um, the onboarding is way faster. And what we notice is um, a lot of business users don't really care about the opinion of IT anymore. And for example, a typical thing is, okay, um, we have users, they have to share files. Well, if the file doesn't work via mail because the file is too big, they use whatever else they found. They can use, for example, Dropbox, their own personal Dropbox, because it's so fast to just use this solution and IT probably will never know. So that is the model that changes, is that users through public cloud do not always need or believe they do not need um, IT so, more, so, so much anymore. So that's where you have to be very careful. You have to put the governance in place. You have to rethink your strategy and you need to assess what you have and how you're going to enable your business users to bring and to basically introduce those new services to you even when you don't know them. What we notice is a lot of startups that actually have um, software as a service which they developed in the cloud, they do not target IT providers. Why? Because, um, or they do not target the IT people. Why? Because showing you the answer to a business problem, if you're an IT, well, you don't really care. Maybe you know that there's this need, but again, it's not going to make your life easier if you have the perfect tool so that your business users can do the work. However, if they show the same tool to the business user, you know that the business user is going to come to IT and ask, 
hey, I saw this tool, I want it. And they told me they can onboard me within a week. So all of this is what you're going to have to cope with, is that the model and the change are getting so much faster. And the requests do not anymore come from IT, but they come from the business. Which makes sense for me from as a business guy. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Audrey, we are running out of time. We still have uh, one, two minutes. So okay. thank so you. Let, for that. let me just say, uh, finish on that. Um, should you keep investing in private cloud? The answer is, is quite straightforward. Yes, you should still keep both. And what is the future of cloud? Well, here's a growth rate we saw um, here last year is currently you have a growth rate of 8% in private cloud and 24% in public cloud. And I think it really shows a trend. I think it shows that currently most companies are investing in public cloud. And that's the trend that's going to continue. So now last slide to finish. In case you're interested uh, in private cloud or in public cloud or to know more, know that Talendis is always there to help you to answer most of your questions. Um, we have offerings of private cloud, we have offerings in regards to the main uh, three public clouds, we can help you move there, we can help you adapt to your organization, but also we work with a lot of partners already uh, with whom we validated their solutions, or if you have solutions, you can work with us to bring those solutions to the local market, so don't hesitate to contact us, and you'll find basically my email here. So, so, so coming back to your last slide, Audric, so yes. I mean, we, we work with uh, Amazon Web Services, we work with Microsoft, um, but should our companies contact you first, have a discussion with you first, understand what will be the perfect cloud for them, and then maybe uh, you get them in contact with those companies? How, 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 how do you proceed usually? So it, it can be either or. So the so street providers which work with us say anyway, and most of the time will redirect um, to an integrator uh, because they cannot do everything for every single customer. So they have a partner first approach, which typically they will redirect leads to us or to other IT integrators. So you can work both ways. Now, what we usually recommend is the best is if you discuss first with us. Why? Because we try to not influence. Um, we try to not influence and to not uh, put one more than the other. So actually what we will do is we will listen to your needs and based on your needs, we will tell you how we believe that one would be the best set. Here you should use this service, here you should use that service. Then you can agree with that or you can have a different opinion. That's all up to you. But again, our strategy is to not force you on one rather than the other. Um, because which, we have... which is great which, because you have no bias as you work. Exactly. With yeah, it's perfect. Um, uh, another thing, and maybe it, it's time to, to give the, um, the mic to, to, um, to the people uh, on the call. Uh, you mentioned something very interesting uh, two minutes ago is if the company is not moving to the cloud, uh, be it private or public, the, the employees will move in a way or another on a cloud service uh, by using, as you mentioned, Dropbox, uh, Google Drive, uh, and the, the, the own private, let's say, uh, services. And you don't want that. So uh, maybe we can give the, the mic to uh, Najia because she, she mentioned something um, about hidden cloud computing. Najia, are you with us, please? Hi, so thanks for this uh, insightful uh, presentation. Uh, yes, I was questioning the fact that uh, using some, some of the solution like you know, Office, um, uh, Trello, Airtables, all, all those uh, solutions, uh, is already putting data and uh, sometimes sensitive data in the cloud without the question of uh, is it public or private or whatever. Um, that's what I used to, to, to call the hidden cloud computing. Have you heard this uh, before, Audrey? <laughs> and what yeah. would be your recommendation? Yeah, so actually there's, there's even a term for that. It's, it's called shadow IT. Shadow it's typically <laughs> when, when our when business users do things without the IT knowing. So what is the solution to that? There, there is actually no, not one go-to solution that would just fix that problem. Um, the first real answer to, to, to this is actually, you need to keep your business users up to date on the information. You need to tell them that they cannot do this, that if you're, for example, in a regulated environment, that again, um, in case they, they get caught, you get caught, you get audited, they will be in trouble, you will be in trouble. 
So this is the first thing to do, is make sure your business users know that they are not allowed to use these tools. The second way, and it's a rather technical approach, is that you actually need to filter, and not everybody does this, most companies don't do this, is that you need to filter the traffic to actually see what's passing and where it's going to. Why? Because your company might be using, um, or your business users might be using, I don't know, Dropbox, but sometimes it's not actually your data. It's a partner putting their data on there and telling your users, hey, go and retrieve it. I've put it up there. And maybe for them it's okay, and for you it isn't. So there is actually no direct answer to this. Um, so the easiest way is to make sure your users know they are not supposed to do this. Uh, may I ask you a second question? Go ahead, Jack. So it was, um, I, I want to yeah, know, go when, you, when you are dealing with business, I, I'm always uh, focusing on the requirements. And what is the requirements that the business puts um, uh, ahead when they want to choose between the private and public cloud? Well, to be honest, uh, most of the times, uh, the business doesn't care whether it's public or private. Okay. Uh, what we see is they know what solutions they want. They already come with the solutions they found on, on Google or something by doing some search. So they have business requirements. So actually our role is then to actually evaluate whether sometimes if the IT prefers, uh, this should be rather in a private cloud or rather in a public cloud. Why? Because um, the question of should we go to public cloud or should we go to private cloud is usually decided on by the IT and not by the business. It can be pushed by the business, but it's decided by IT. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You don't really care. If the, the, if the job is done, uh, be public or private. Exactly. Maybe we can also give, uh, Anthony, if you are still on the line, uh, the mic to Michel, um, explaining the difficulties he has to, to move his clients to the, to the private, uh, private and public cloud. Michel, are you with us? Yeah, I'm there, hi. Please go ahead, Michel. Um, so the problem we, we face is actually that our customers, so we, are, we work for a software company, that, so we provide uh, API solutions for our clients and the clients are not ready for us to put their data and in, uh, in, uh, their applications in a public cloud. So this is a, the a main a big problem we are facing where the clients just don't want to. So if we want to do business, we, we kind of have to use a, a private or hybrid cloud because otherwise we don't, we don't have those customers and we don't do business. So, so I actually kind of agree with you. Um, there, there is still this, this care of, of public cloud. Yet what we also see is that this is um, slowly but surely going away. Um, why? Because more and more companies like, like we or like maybe you um, are um, introducing public cloud to those customers. Now, I just changed the slide again to show you this one. Um, you see in point three, I mentioned that we work uh, with a partner network that provides out of the box software. So typically, for example, in your case, you would be um, in, that, in that box, you provide software to end customers. And then the question is, where do we host this? Well, we have been trying more and more to actually tell our customers, well, we can actually host it in the public cloud. Here's the security we put in place. Trust us. Maybe you do not trust the software provider because they are small, because they have only few customers if they are a startup but we have many, many customers on the same model. And here's what we are going to put in place. And here's how we are gonna help you. And here's going to be the plan, how you can adopt public cloud. So if you want, and if you um, require more information on that specifically, uh, we can even take this offline. Uh, you'll drop me a mail, we'll discuss a bit more and I can explain you typically uh, what is the model we follow to actually even provide public cloud solutions when the customer doesn't feel yet ready. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Rodrigo. I mean, I mean, yes, you, you didn't touch on the too much on the compliance side, but we have this law in Luxembourg regarding cloud computing. And uh, if you are regulated, um, the law, let me know if I'm wrong, uh, Audric, the law obliges you to have a cloud, but host it in Europe, right? So yeah, um, so yeah. In case you want to go to public cloud and you want to be authorized by the local regulators, um, so the CSSF, uh, for the matter of the fact, um, they require you to have it in Europe. Now, um, the part which I didn't really address is indeed those regulations. 
Now, in regards to COVID-19, the CSSF actually made a, a quite huge effort, which means they temporarily relaxed those regulations, which means for regulated entities that needed it, they actually authorized that by notifying them, you could simply um, move temporary um, resources to the public cloud in order to be able to respond correctly to COVID-19. This is the first point. The second point is that, yes, if you did that, you will most likely still need to be and to follow the correct process to be compliant in a phase two, which is post COVID-19, or even if you needed to be compliant prior to COVID-19. And how is this addressed? Well, in our case, for example, when we provide um, Azure, AWS, and Google services, we actually already agreed on terms and conditions with those providers, which are compliant with um, so it says it's a regulation. So for example, we mentioned that the data needs to stay in Europe. Well, again, we represent um, almost 200 customers. So what we did is we contacted those providers and we changed our terms and conditions. And in our contracts, it's clearly mentioned that they are not allowed to move the data out of Europe, unless basically we and our end customer authorize it. Okay, so, so for example, how we address those points. And actually, every point which was addressed by the CSSF, we have addressed them with those three public cloud providers. Thank you. Very useful information. But I guess we, I mean, if we don't have a second wave, we'll go back to normal then, uh, the CSSF, as is temporary, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, can we give the mic, Anthony, please, to Florian? Because uh, she asked something. I could not even understand the question, so the better she asked me. Florian? Okay. I, I'm here. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. My question is regarding uh, security framework, especially for uh, public cloud. I would like to know which uh, security framework is the most suitable for public cloud. I think so we have like, we go through a standardized security approach regarding cloud. And I would like your point of view. For example, NIST, CSF, or I don't know, ISO 27K. Uh, do you have some input from your side? Yes, so, so actually, um, we at first were also scared about the security in the public cloud at the talent this level. So we actually did really a lot of work. Uh, what did we do? That is um, the easiest way to explain you uh, what are the requirements is that, of course, the same security level that you would put in a private cloud, you will have to put it in the public cloud, which means you still need firewalls, you still need to um, uh, log everything, to do some uh, pen testing uh, from time to time, etc. But how does it clearly, um, more concretely, what happened? In our case, for example, first of all, of course, we followed CESSF regulation, we also followed the NIST regulation, and we are currently in the process of getting those three clouds validated for ISO 27001. What does it mean? That we created, for example, an, an internal policy, a security policy, we call it a PSSI, uh, because it stands in French for Police de Sécurité de Service Informatique. And this um, document actually has a total of 156 rules, security rules, we need to respect for us and for our customers to secure the cloud environment. Those range from encrypting storage, encrypting um, communications, but also all the way to, well, um, we need to make sure that the cloud provider also takes security on his side, which means, okay, who can actually um, access the data which is in the public cloud? Who can ac access the data centers? Can I verify who accessed the data centers? Can I verify who accessed my data? So all of this, in our case, we documented it, how it's done, and we have then created a policy out of it. From a tooling perspective, everything you would usually use, you'll have to use it in the public cloud as well. Thank you. So it's always good to check some certification uh, from the cloud service provider uh, yes. to make sure that they respect. Yeah. In, in our case, actually, if you work, for example, with us, uh, we automatically put those rules in place, those 156 rules, they are our standard, and we will not onboard you if you do not agree with those rules. That's what we call our strict minimum, and of course, um, security is important for us, and we do not want our customers to be breached. Okay, thank you so much. I I'm looking to Ismail, he's, he's very focused on what you are saying, and uh, can we give the mic to Ismail? I don't know, you didn't ask any question, but uh, I want to hear your, your feedback. Well, thank you very much. Um, um, Alex, Adric, can you hear me? Uh, 
Yes, yes we can hear you. Okay, that's good. Uh, basically, yeah, I got a few points. I guess that the CCS nowadays is pushing toward the adoption of hybrid cloud um, for GDPR reason. Sorry. Um, for practical reason, what, what is the cost eff effective solution um, for you? Because if I adopt the hybrid cloud, I think I have to pay twice. Right? I have to pay, uh, for instance, ten ten others, and I have to pay as well the cloud the cloud provider. If, for instance, I use um, let's say um, Azure or, or whatever. So, what do you think in terms of cost? Um, is it possible to have your your point of view um, regarding the optimal? I'm like uh, approach uh, between private hybrid or completely public. Yeah, perfect. Great question, Ismail. Thank you so much. That, let's talk money, Audrey. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so actually, um, it's kind of a misconception that you you will have to pay twice. Um, the reality is, um, if you use a private cloud, you'll have to pay, for example, us for our private cloud. But if you use a public cloud, then again, um, you actually. Uh, would pay it, for example, in our case, only to us, and you would not pay it directly to Microsoft if you use us. Um, what does it mean? It actually means that um, we have a partnership uh, with them that we actually provide those resources at the same price. And it's simply that if we bring them lead, um, they uh, provide us with, uh, with uh, some funding as well. So first of all, will you have to pay both in case you use a public cloud via us, for example? No, not at all. You'll only pay once and you'll pay the same price whether you go with them directly or whether you go with us. So then comes the question, okay, but if I have two clouds, um, does it mean I need to have pay twice because I have the same on each side? No. Again, there, the answer is quite simple. In, by default, you will not have the same workloads on both clouds. You will really make a selection of what you want on one, what is business critical, or what data do I want to keep in Luxembourg, and then the rest, typically what do I want in public cloud, and it's going, going to be, okay, for example, I'm developing my own applications, it's testing, it's a playground, well, I don't need that to be in Luxembourg, let's just put this in the public cloud. So it's always- oh, What will be the cost, Audric? What will be the cost? I mean, uh, to, to our fintechs who are listening, how much should they, Pay per year. I mean, just as an idea, on average, it doesn't have to be on the volume. Or so, so let's take an example: uh, a, a, a virtual machine. Uh, if you take it, for example, in the public cloud, it can start at 20 euro per month for the smallest thing you can get without any redundancy. So it starts really, really cheap without any managed service, without anything. If you just just want something where, for example, for personal reason, you want to host your own website or your own blog, where every Friday or so you go and put a post, you can start really, really low. However, again, it's not a high service. If you want usually um, the same service quality, then in a private cloud, the price is going to be more or less the same. Why? Because you have to think, um, if I take it in a private cloud, okay, I'm buying some hardware and I will use this hardware. But in the end, if I actually go to the public cloud, I'm still running on hardware and they still need to pay that hardware. So actually, if you look at scale and for similar service, the price is, is more or less the same. Uh, we did that, um, we did it actually multiple times comparing our Uflex, for example, compared to Azure or compared to, to AWS or compared to, to Google. So the price, yes, there's gonna be a, a difference, but I don't know if you spend a million euro in a private cloud, maybe on a public cloud, you're, you're gonna pay 10,000 euro less. So again, it's really not a price difference as such. What is the difference? You should not take a million euro. It doesn't cost a million euro for a fintech to be on your cloud. No, no, Please, no, indeed, sure. indeed not. Indeed not. Okay, okay let, let's scale those, number, those numbers down. If you use a thousand euro on our platform, maybe you will use 990 euro for, for an equivalent service in the public cloud. So the price is actually not the, not the main driver which should bring you to the public cloud. Where it's going to be the driver? The driver is going to be that you have more innovative tools in the public cloud, and maybe you do not need anymore the same level of service, and that's how you're going to be able to reduce your price. I'm giving you an example. If you take a, data, uh, a database in a private data center, there are still people behind managing this database. If you take it as a SaaS, so as a managed service in the public cloud, it's all automated, so there are no people anymore doing the job. 
It's simply scripts, it's automations that do it, and therefore you do not need to pay the people. You only pay uh, for those scripts to execute. And that's how actually you will do some savings. So if I take the same workload on one side and I move it to the other, will I save some money? No, you need to transform it slightly. And that's what we call the adoption. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, Alex, somebody Alex. is trying to reach out. We are out of time. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for the question, um, Ismail. Uh, one last question and then I will give the mic to, to uh, Anthony. Uh, Audric, what's next? After cloud, do we have uh, space computing? What's, uh, how do you vision the next uh, technology? You're actually um, joking most likely, but um, we have already um, had talks with ESA, for example, and others not in regards to space computing, but um, even how uh, space agencies, for example, could maybe be the next revolution in this regard. Now, of course, right now, um, it's, it's mainly sci-fi uh, and, and there's nothing planned yet, but... Um, I do believe in, in, in a few years, data will be stored somewhere into satellites and stuff like that. Indeed, uh, indeed. I agree, I agree with you. Thank you so much, Rodrigo. It was very interesting. I've learned a lot. Uh, at least I didn't know that public cloud is server than private cloud, and uh, it might be more expensive. So I thought uh, the opposite. Anthony, please, if you can close the session. We have a huge week uh, ahead with an amazing Friday coming. Yes, absolutely, Alex. Uh, thank you very much, Rodrigo, for, for having been with us today and for your teachings uh, about the cloud. This Friday, as Alex has mentioned, we have our Fintech Friday uh, that is hosting prominent VC, founder of Illuminati, Illuminate Financials. Uh, the Fireside Chat with Nancy is going to be followed uh, by our networking session with a live DJ. We also would like to emphasize that next week on Wednesday, we bring uh, on June 17th, we are going to host Carolyn Malcolm, head of global blockchain policy of the UACB on the blockchain, on the USCD's work about blockchain, FinTech, and the impact of COVID-19 on financial services. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to share the uh, registration link in the chat so you can have a closer look at it. And I will keep the page open for one more minute. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Anthony. Guys, wish you a great afternoon. Thank you so much, Rodrigo, again, for your time, your expertise. You might be the expert in Luxembourg regarding cloud computing. Thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.